Welcome to another exciting episode of Tent City Diaries. Episode number seven covers the mitigation camp and the birth of Junkieville. Ill, ill. I'm going to attempt to change the narrative slightly because it turns out there are two types of homeless people. There are those who are victims of circumstance who don't like their situation and are trying their best to get back on their feet. I was married for 13 years. Three kids. My husband became a heroin addict and found something he loved more than me. And he worked and took care of me and the kids and I can't. And then there are the drug dealers and addicts and criminal elements who embrace life on the streets without rules or societal norms in order to facilitate their gangster lifestyle. I'm down here because I want to be, because I, I wanted to be in a place where I could actually build my own home and have the freedom to do what I wanted to do, you know? It's that rogue element that Tent City Diaries is focused on, so instead of just lumping everyone together into the homeless category from now on, I've come up with a new term, Junkieville. You'll know you're in a Junkieville by the syringes and drug paraphernalia littering the ground because people trying to better themselves aren't doing drugs. If you suddenly notice an increase in the rodents scurrying about, they're probably feasting on the mountains of garbage and other crap left behind by tweakers and heroin addicts. Plus, all those stolen bicycle parts make for great hiding places. Remember this Wheeler Avenue junkie bill? And finally, it's a sure sign if the so-called residents of these locations are hostile and aggressive towards curious citizens like myself. I mean, usually it's like you're trying to hide something. No, we're just trying to live. Don't have like to walk to you. I, I'm not trying to... That's great. To further help explain, we meet Regan Unsold, a longtime area teacher and son of the legendary mountaineer Willie Unsold and three-term congresswoman Jolene Unsold. I've been to this other site here. Um, I met Chili. The um, site. Yep, the camp host, nice guy. And I'm just curious, and I think a lot of other people are, why, um, why are these two sites so different? Yeah. So, good question. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals came down with a decision uh, that uh, basically held that local governments could not prosecute, or criminalize, or sweep people who had taken shelter on public property and did not have uh, viable alternative places, legal places to be. And so that, so mm. the city of Olympia put a hold on their scheduled sweeps of those camps that I mentioned and began a process of trying to develop uh, mitigation sites, uh, mitigation to reduce the harm that people are experiencing living in the streets and that is the first mitigation site. So what you see over there with all of the identical tents and whatnot uh, is a city sponsored and city sanctioned downtown campsite. This place here is not city sponsored, not sanctioned, even though a lot of people think that it is. It's it's kind of Is this uh, the overflow? It, is there well, not it's effort? kind of in twilight zone <laughs> because the city according to the Ninth Circuit for its decision cannot simply sweep these people unless the city is able to offer them a, a legal alternative. So that's very organized. Yeah. Um, uh, people need to agree to a certain set of guidelines in order to be able to move in, and they have to sign the paper saying that they ag agree with those. Follow basic rules? Wow, what a concept. Hey, maybe these people are serious about getting their shit together. People staying in the junkie bills got one thing on their mind. It's getting high. Let's see what these folks are up to. Uh, here with Chili, and he's the camp host here at one of the sites. Um, this is the city, uh, city run. Which was, which was first? They were. They were? Yes. And now, um, this one looks really uniform, looks like the tents are all kind of the same brand, and they're like, a, the same. this was, this was really planned out maybe a, a little more cohesive. Well, yes, they're all 10 by 10 tents, they're all the same, uh, uh, 
platforms, pallets. Uh, so what do you? What, what are part of your duties? My duty? Well, I help keep it clean, help keep it orderly, uh, just keep the disturbances down to a minimum. Uh, we don't have any rules set in stone. We just have a couple of guidelines. Uh, we ask for a 10 o'clock quiet-ish time. Uh -huh. Just turn it down a little bit, 10 o'clock. Don't have as many guests coming through because that's part of the safety that we're trying to achieve here. Safety? Common courtesy? Cleanliness? Wow, what a concept. I feel like these are legitimate homeless people. Not those vagabond scum that trash the planet and our neighborhoods with their syringes, their piles of garbage, their stolen bicycles. This is a place where people are really trying to get their shit together. All right, so I guess the buzzword is mitigation something or other. It sounded too legalese for me. I just call them Tent City 1, Tent City 2, and we're at Tent City 2 right now. It's Seahawk Tent City because we got the green and blue rocking proud. Let's go, Hawks. But um, Chili is holding down Fort. Chili and Tommy, you guys are killing it over here. This place looks great. Good vibe. Everyone's chill. People enjoying themselves. Probably going to get a good night's sleep. Super clean. I mean, this is um, a night and day difference from old, from the rebels over there by the by the bus station. Anyway, um, that's it. We're done. It's Sunday night. We gotta go for now. I feel pretty good about this place. This this is where I'd stay if I was homeless. Okay, this has been another Greg Zarge production. Feeling it's like it's another Greg Zarge production. <laughs>